Mic check, one, two, one, two, <laughs> one, two. Yeah, I think it's connected, yeah. It's yeah. good. Looks All good. Right. So this is going to be the 11, <laughs> my 11.5 Urban Blaster build. Three, two, one. Hey everybody, it's Eric and Roy. <laughs> and thanks for checking out another Hatchet Cast episode. And today we're going to be talking, breaking down my 11.5 uh, Urban Battle Rifle. Um, or Urban Rifle, okay? I know for Battle Rifle for all the 308 guys out there, but Urban Rifle, uh, just kind of breaking down the parts and how I have it built and my experiences with that type of build so far. She's a classic. Oh, uh, bud. She is a classic. Yeah, she's been around the corner a couple she's times. She's been worn out <laughs> quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, if you haven't already guys, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and also hit the notification bell so that way you get updates about any new episodes that drop and um, any disclaimers. No. All right, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Get out, get out and train. Yeah, go train. Go train. Don't be. Uh, hit yeah. up our website. Yes. If you are looking to support us, the best mm -hmm. way to support us, uh, you guys are always asking us, you know, hey, I love your content. How do you support us? Jump over on our website, pick up some merch, come and take a class with us. Yep. So, and then obviously, like Eric said, hit the like and subscribe button. Like and su 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 subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> so. Suspectly subscribe. Okay. All right. So, uh, kind of starting from the tip, working our way backwards on the rifle. Um, so, so what kind of <laughs> what kind of muzzle device do you have? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the microphone makes me have free. Uh, okay. Uh, so as far as the the can, I'm running a Griffin Armament Dual Lock Seven uh, can. That's a 30 cal suppressor, and I have their their flash hider on there. That's a new ad, right? So it is that's something that uh, just recently you started running that can, yes. right? Kind of yep. testing it out. Yep. I haven't had the opportunity to run that one yet. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, but so far, what do you think of it? It's quiet. It's yeah. nice. Yeah. It's really nice. The dual lock on there is mm -hmm. super. Super nice. So it's kind of like a taper lock system, right? Yep. So you screw it on down, um, and then and then basically you just have a locking ring. Yeah, similar so. to the Hux works mm -hmm. that we had, where it has yep. that taper. Yep. Yeah. So I think taper lock um, mounting systems mm -hmm. really, you know, uh, it's been around for a little while, but uh, it really has that return to zero or return yeah. back, uh, a very very consistent versus you know some type of ratcheting system. Right. Um, the dual lock can kind of mimics a little bit of a flow through right how so how's yeah. it gas so, so i don't it, want to call it a flow through because it's not a flow through obviously that's a trademark by, yeah my hooks works everything yeah. else like that but it does have like little ports on the front to allow some additional gas to escape out the front yeah it, it, it really it's it's actually super soft recoil and and we'll actually have like a super in-depth video yeah. in the future on it but like so far initial impressions just running it and you probably about you know 600 rounds through it so okay. far um it's it's Really, really soft, and also I notice also on the 30 cal guns, so like the 308, mm -hmm. and on the 300 blackout, you see a super, super significant amount of recoil reduction. Um, super quiet, and also um, the flash, as far as like under night vision, is not bad. So okay, really cool. good flash reduction. Yeah, you just um, recently taught a night vision class with it, right? Yeah, yeah, cool. and, it did, and it did fantastic. So super happy with that. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm running on the end of that of that rifle. And um, as far as the barrel. She's got some miles on her. Yeah. Um, that barrel is uh, now what? What twenty? Is it? Would it be twenty nineteen or twenty twenty? 2019, yeah. yeah. 20, either late 2019 or early 2020, mm -hmm. uh, ballistic advantage barrel, and and man, like 2020. We were running some reps. Yeah. So, we were repping it out. Yeah, yeah. We we had a nice chain of supply of ammo. Yeah. Um, you know that we had built up mm -hmm. and bought. Mm -hmm. Spent a lot of money in ammo, 
and that thing got that was actually the only rifle you were running yeah it, it, for a long time i was yeah. only running that yeah. yeah and it was you know what's funny is actually i remember now it's actually 2020 because um from 2019 no actually 2020 to 2021 um i was running a mark 18 and then i switched over to a ballistic advantage 11.5 barrel and that thing got the groove shot out of it so mm -hmm. that was the replacement barrel that they sent to me um and broke the bolt on that and then and i still have the barrel so the barrel actually that build kind of got you know after 2021 which is a wild year as far as reps mm -hmm. i kind of set it aside and then to kind of be able to run the dual lock you know yep. have that clearance and that handguard i brought that back out yep. and i started putting it more reps back through it so roscoe is sending a barrel yes, uh that barrel has got a lot of miles on yeah it, so, so ross um, need, a, need a fresh barrel she needs so. to be retired yeah, yeah. so um, but yeah, ballistic which advantage. I like the Roscoe eleven five barrels. Yeah, um, yeah, their bloodline uh, series. Their bloodline series, the profile of the barrel. Mm -hmm. um, they, they seem to be plenty accurate. Uh, yeah, great luck out of them so far. So yeah. I think that'll be a good fit for that rifle. One hundred percent. And also yeah. they're well priced too. Yeah, so. and I was gonna say this rifle really is not an overly priced build, right? No. As far as from its heart and soul, it, it's not. As we as we go down through, uh, you know, um, if you guys just do a little bit of research on some of these parts that are in this thing, and 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 I can attest to watching how many reps have been and how many rounds have been put through this thing um you know you you don't necessarily always have to spend you know the most amount of money to have a pretty solid running right oh 100 so. and it's like we always talk about for not being brand loyal yep. and you doing your own qc mm -hmm. and making sure you buy yep. quality stuff so yeah as far as the handguard that is also a very crusty handguard it's my old bcm mcmr yeah handguard. which i believe that's also the magnesium series for you guys that yeah. are um been doing this for a little while long uh, <laughs> than others <laughs> like, uh, like, yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> uh, the mcr series when they had the uh they, they had like the magnesium mm. version of it or whatever so um, um actually that's been it's in lock now so uh but yeah i think that that that's, that's that handguard has been on there for quite some time yeah too. were they having issues with them in the past or so i had early on with the key mod series um in that rail where on like 14 5 rifles um if the rifle got bumped hard enough or dropped um, with the flashlight mount, it was mm -hmm. it was like crushing in. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, but whenever they switched over to the non-magnesium version, which I think that's actually what yours is now, yeah, um, didn't really have any issues yeah. with that. So it's been pretty solid. The only thing I noticed is on the actual handguard, there's actually like a U collar that prevents anti-rotation, mm -hmm. and one of the eyelets snapped off. You oh, know? Okay. So that is something you know to but keep in mind. But that's also now three four years. Of heavy usage, heavy usage yeah. down the road. Yeah, so. so I just cranked it down and just hope for the best and yeah. just keep and, checking. And that it. can be replaced. Yeah, I mean yeah. we can we could pull it apart and fix that. So yeah. that's pretty easy. BCM would send us a new piece for that. So oh, that'd be very nice of them. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, as far as the handguard goes, it's a BCM handguard. Nothing crazy. Um. And as far as the on the front of that with my light laser and IR head combo, the light is a mod light. Mm -hmm. The IR head is a separate head, is a Malakoff head, and both of those are on a they're Reptilia on, mount. Yeah, Reptilia torch, I do believe they call yeah. that body. Um, yeah. They're direct M lock mounts, yeah. is what they are, so no additional mounting system or anything like that, no light bars mm -hmm. on that one. Um, <clears throat> You can still get them far enough forward where oh, you're not getting 100%. too much, you know, too much shadow there. Yeah. So. The only thing that I have to do is I have to kind of, you know, work my fingers around to get the, you know, the sure, uh, the surefire, the Griffin can off to work that. But the thing is, when we put that together, mm -hmm. we were just so sick of light bars that we're like, let's get it as close we as we bad, can. We had a bad run on the light bars. Yeah. Um, not necessarily from, you know, not not name calling or anything like mm -hmm. that, uh, but we had a very very bad run on light bars where they were where they were breaking quite often. Um, I mean, it was like two or three we were <clears> breaking <throat> consistently. And, and I, it, look, at the end of the day, you want your light bar to probably break over your over your light. Right. Um, but they were breaking with very minimal amount of uh, abuse. Yeah. So it wasn't like we were jamming them into a barricade or anything like that. Yeah. Um, but they were, they were breaking entirely too easy. So yeah. it was just like we had, I ended up with a couple of those extra bodies and one day we were putting it together on um, putting that rifle back together. Just like, hey, just slap these bodies on it. And, let's see and it when you put them on, they're like, it is so tight. Yeah, it fits yeah, good. Yeah, it fits it does, real nice. It fits really good. Now, yeah. let me ask you, um, obviously the mod light head, mod light heads are absolutely fantastic mm -hmm. um, when it comes to, you know, their candela and their, you know, illumination. Oh, uh, the throw. So, uh-oh. 
The mod light head, so something I've noticed about it is, I think maybe I need to replace the O-ring because mm -hmm. on during one of the night vision classes, you know, I was using it, I was just walking around, it started to flicker, and mm -hmm. then it was because I was noticing that, that head, like I'm, start, I'm trying to tighten it more and more and more mm -hmm. to be able to get a connection, yeah, so or the connection's kind of finicky, so okay. I think it's just getting worn out, yeah. you know, but... Um, something I did notice. So I have we, to unscrew it so that way it doesn't ND. Yeah. yeah, so I mean we do run our lights and our illuminators quite often. Yeah. So they are getting they are getting a lot of time and use on them. And, and once again, that, that head is probably three years old because yeah. that came off of one of my rifles. Years, yep. So yep. that came off of one of my rifles, yeah. so that one is. I would, I would have had the 100 Concepts light caps, but the, the the body, the heads are too they, close to the yeah, suppressor. They fit too, so, entirely too close yeah, for, so and with the way that we have those mounted on there, uh, yeah. without some type of light bar system to kind of stagger them. Yeah. Um, with with those um, reptilia torch bodies, and they yeah. definitely are extremely too too tight. So if you get those bodies, it's just something to consider. Yeah. You know, what the, about the um, the Malakoff head? So what is so? Let me ask. Awesome. You're running a laser on there, yes. too, right? Yeah. So you have you have IR mm -hmm. laser, uh, pick 15. Yep. Yeah. So pick 15. Uh, full power. Yes. Okay. Um, why the why the Malakoff head as far as IR illumination? I think it gives me more options. It's also kind of redundant. So I have the IR head or the IR illuminator on the PEC 15, but it's not as bright. It doesn't mm -hmm. give it as broad of a spectrum. I can narrow it down to a smaller beam, and I can use it in conjunction with my laser. But you know, having the Malakoff head, it's like a huge flood. So mm -hmm. I can flood an entire area versus with the PEC-15, I can't do that. I can yeah. get a little bit, you know, I can really focus in that, that IR flood, but yeah. the Malakoff gives me like a boom. I get a flood of an entire area. I can see 50 to 100 yards wide. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a massive area it covers. Yeah. So just a little bit more capability, yeah. sacrificing very minimal amount. I mean, it's just of, really, I'm just sacrificing yeah. the space. Yeah, you know, that's like it. So, that you're not really utilizing else. for exactly. nothing else anyways. Yeah, so. so are they running, uh, or, or both bodies, are they on the same side, or are they splitting kind of like snake heads? Yeah, so they look like eyeballs okay. with a suppressor as the nose. So having one on each side, it just makes it really balanced is, is how I like that. And it's just aesthetically pleasing. Yep. Um, and I am, for the light, I am running a direct push. Uh, I run a remote switch to the PEC-15, which I may actually just take off because I usually run the functions on the PEC mm -hmm. itself. And then on the Malakoff head, because it's on the other side, I'm a southpaw and I'm a genius because I'm left-handed, um, I have to use a remote switch to make it turn on because I can't direct push it without drastically changing my hand position. Yeah, so, so you just confirmed that you're weird. What? <laughs> so like, uh, yeah, anyways, pretty smart. Uh, so yeah, I, I run that, that's, that's why I run those remote switches, but understand that's a point of failure, mm -hmm. you know? So if I run that, you know, they can be finicky, okay. short circuit. And you're running Unity tape switches? Yeah, um, Unity, yeah. Hot button is yep. what it is. I don't really care what manufacturer it is. Um, pretty much every tape switch or button that I've ever ran, whether it's Unity mm -hmm. or Surefire or whoever, at some point in time they have failed. Yeah. Um, you know, um, so I'm kind of in that direction where I've pulled all of mine off and I'm running, you know. Everything uh, direct. Everything direct yeah. um, on it, so. Yeah. If I do have it, uh, I have a, I have a backup you know, redundancy. I have the tail caps, the Surefire tail caps. I don't know what the model number is. Yeah. That gives you the ability to, to plug your tail cap in and then, or not your tail cap, your tape switch in, mm -hmm. and then also have the push button. So. Can you talk actually real quick about your IR setup you have on your 13.9 um, or the Blackout Defense rifle? So the Blackout Defense um, rifle right now, it has a, sorry, I'm bumping the table here a little bit. It has the, I don't know the model number. It's it has, the Holosun. It's, it's one of the Holosun lasers. Yeah. It's only IR laser. Yeah. Not any kind of vis laser, only IR. And then it's also center line. Mm. So it's center line of the bore. It's not yeah. offset whatsoever. Um, running a typical uh, mod light head yep. on it also. I'm running the BE Myers Kiji. Yeah. Um, I love the BE Myers Kiji head. Yeah. It is, to me, it has been absolutely fantastic. Um, you you can obviously can tap tap it, set it up uh, so it's programmable. So you can kind of have you know you can have that nice wide flood. You can have that medium range, mm. and you can have that tighter you know tighter beam uh, to stretch out to some distance. Yeah. Um, I usually typically have mine program where it's the for the most part, a lot of times the way that we're shooting right now, currently we're shooting in a very wide open area, so I have it where it goes straight to the tight beam, yeah, and it works its way works its way backwards. Okay. Um, if if I had it set up on a little bit more of a CQB rifle, mm -hmm. I probably would do that wider flood. Right. But uh, but right now that's kind of the way it's programmed. 
It's a little more expensive. Yeah. I think they're in that 750 to 850. You guys comment down below. Um, when I bought mine, I got some early on industry pricing on it, and mm -hmm. it was in like that $600 range. And so, the Malakoff head is what? <clears throat> it's really cheap. It's like in that $200 range. Yeah. So, but it is not programmable. No. So you don't have a tight throw or anything like that. Um, I like running a separate IR head. Yeah. Off of my laser. That's I know nice. it's not traditional, you know, um, but. Uh, I've come accustomed to it, and I, I, I think just through training, um, I can control the IR flood, the IR, mm -hmm. without even having anything to do with my laser. Yeah. Um, so um, I, the two, they're two different, separate systems. Mm -hmm. And then I can obviously, if I truly wanted to, um, have them tied into the same system with like a Unity Taps or something like that. Yeah. I could, I could do so where the IR illumination and the IR <coughs> laser could basically be on it at the exact same time. Yeah, so. and I think the reason why I brought that up with your setup is, you know, mine and yours are the same. I actually, I've even thought about selling the PEC and getting rid of that to be able to get multiple IR-only lasers because... Yeah, so I have a couple of Holosyn lasers. Yeah. Um, I have a Steiner Otol. Yep. Uh, and then I have a Steiner um, D2. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, D2's big and bulky, but I really like the D2. Mm -hmm. I like the um, I like the illuminator on it, and the laser is obviously plenty plenty bright enough. Yeah. But it's just big. But that Holosyn laser, honestly, for for what I do with it. I mean, you're pretty much getting almost like what the PEC-15 can offer or other high-end lasers for a lot less of a price. Yeah, you know? and I mean, obviously it's a sieve laser, so it's not a full power or anything like yeah. that, but uh, I'm not lassoing freaking stuff at, you know, 2,000 meters. Calling so, in helos so. and airstrikes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's uh -huh. all about, you know, what's your application. That's mm -hmm. a big thing is just like you have to ask yourself, what is your application? What is realistic? If you're training with a group of guys or a team or whatever, your, your you know, yeah. buddies, yeah. you know, what is your realistic application? And, and that should tailor. And what can you afford? Yes, I mean, What can exactly. you actually yeah. truly afford? Can yeah. you can you afford to go buy a, a B. Myers Mall? Yeah. You know, if you, if you can and you have the budget, then go buy it. Because it's freaking bomb. It's awesome. Or you can save money and <clears throat> use that money to go train. Correct. You know? exactly. so, so there's there's tons of you know things. If you want to get it, and you got scratch the edge, just scratch it. But cool. so IR, we're good. Light, yep. we're good. So um, moving back. Going to the optic. I'm going with a EOTech with a magnifier. Mm -hmm. As you guys know, we did and that video. EOTech on there. is what? EXPS3. EXPS3 on a. <clears throat> E Unity. Unity. Or are you on the Bobro? I can't. Not Bobro. 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 Overboard system? I think it's the American Defense X. Oh, okay. No, no. Okay. It is It is the Unity Tactical. We will put it here. It's in the, <laughs> just hit, look at the B roll. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's the Unity Tactical, and I'm running it's a. pretty sad that you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Anyways, it's been a long day. Yeah, so it's. I think it's on the 3X. I think it's on the 3X or the 5X, uh, 3X magnifier, and it has the Unity drop-down mount for that. Um, standard, we've done a video on it. You guys can go check out the EOTech video on why we love it so much. Um, but that's the optic I'm running. Upper receiver is narrow precision, uh, just a standard mm -hmm. plain Jane upper receiver with a ballistic advantage bolt in it. It's actually a replacement bolt because uh, it broke the last one. And then as far as the lower, it is a Daniel lower with the- it's the Daniel Defense- um, Ambi. Yeah, the newest lower, yep, basically yep. the full AMBI um, S SBR lower, basically, yep, exactly. so underneath our FFL license. Yep. So. so, and then inside of that, as far as the trigger goes, I'm running the Centurion Arms AST two stage trigger. Now, the mileage that has primarily been put on that rifle was on just like a typical normal PSA lower, right? Yeah. Yeah, yep. just a regular Palmetto State lower, nothing, nothing fancy there. No. Um, and I do believe that had that lower had we put a Larue in it. No, that one originally it had a. It had like a, I think an ALG trigger, okay. like a polished ALG. Yep. It was nothing crazy. Yep. No, no, it was the Velocity System trigger. Oh, Velocity System. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the drop-in stops. Yeah, the drop-in. So that was back in the day when you used to do the whole single. Uh, yeah, back when it was awesome. Before you went Just kidding. Just before you went weird. into two-stage two trigger. Yeah. So I, and so I introduced you to two-stage Yeah, triggers, I, so. I, I've, I've stepped away from single-stage and gone yeah, to two-stage. Two stage. Yeah. But, uh, and then as far as the buffer system. Single-stage is, is kind of like right. <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 uh, I don't, uh, explain. Explain. Uh, so, it's, uh. it's, I mean, for my buffer system, I'm running, that threw me off. So, like, as far as my buffer system, I'm running an H2 buffer and a blue Springco spring. It, the name of the company is Springco, right? Yeah, Springco. Yeah, Springco. So, blue Springco spring, H2 buffer, helps kind of slow that bolt down a little bit. You know, it is, the gun is overgassed, yeah. so that does really help out a lot. Um, and then just a CTR Magpul stock with, uh, 
a prototype riser on there. Prototype. Prototype. Yep. Yep. Um, and then obviously like, you know, running the Unity, or not Unity Tactical, the Lunar Concepts uh, Contour Sling, mm -hmm. and almost running the Bubba Tab to kind of retain that sling. Um, but overall, it's just been a great build. And I honestly was running the, the Daniel Defense, the Mark 18 for so long. Mm -hmm. I'd gotten used to short, and I was like, man, you know, I you know I had to pick up something else, and I was like, maybe I'll just run the 11.5. Yeah. It was kind of fun dusting that thing back off, but it needs a major upgrade. Yeah. So maybe a follow-up video on some upgrades? Yeah, probably do a follow-up as far as upgrades, and then also do a video on your build. Yeah, for your maybe we'll talk build. about the upgrades when we, when we uh, on yours when we do mine. So Yeah, there you go. That's Mine's a good pretty idea. simple. It's yeah. just a factory SBR. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but, it's the Knight's Arm of it, yeah. factory SBR. Oh, so. No big deal. <laughs> no big deal. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall... Super bougie. <laughs> the gun has been super awesome as far as, you know, it's, it's all mismatched parts put together, but I did a lot of research going into it. You know what I'm saying? like really put in the time no, and then made sure that the parts were you know exactly what I was looking for yeah and then as things failed I kind of made a note of that and said mm -hmm. okay maybe next time I'll look for something different that won't fail me or try something else that mm -hmm. won't have a failure there so um, as you start getting really good on the on having that one build that you have for your application that one warrior one sword and you find something that works and you put it together just replace pieces and kind of keep note of what's failing and what's lasting so that way you can buy replacement parts for that from the same manufacturer mm -hmm. or the same model yeah. um so that's that's been huge as far as my feedback as far as what i've gotten out of my rifle and how that's helped me grow on my journey so this rifle, I mean, it's got a lot of miles on it and everything mm -hmm. like that, um, and kind of breaking it back out, knocking the dust off of yeah. it. What what application did you primarily run this thing and use this thing in? So, so I, I mostly use it like running gun. Mm -hmm. So like our running gun sessions that we do are within 100 yards, so 120, and then in. Um, okay. There's sometimes I busted it out to distance, out to five. Yeah, you know, occasionally but, we'll have um, you know an open gym session where we're running you yeah. know, out a little bit further. Yeah, so. but mostly it was running that in that inside of 100 yards type mm -hmm. so like more of that cqb urban fighting distance so like that's where i got a lot of the reps and that's where i got super familiar with it um a lot of different types of shooting style in 100%. that day also yeah um a lot of different you know barricade work yes. um you know um just just a lot of you know uh exerting energy you know yeah. um you know a lot of moving of weight things mm -hmm. like that um you've, you you almost be kind of come really really accustomed and, and really get the feel for it and it's yes. kind of it's kind of cool i broke out one of my 12 fives recently mm -hmm. that had an acog on it because that's like what i, I ran for, for a really long time when i was running that you were yeah. running, ACOG. running yeah. an acog on a 12 five yeah. so it's just it does it is kind of cool to break out a system that you haven't ran mm -hmm. in quite some time yep. so uh, kind of brings back some of the nostalgic of early on open gym sessions know, at yeah. the ranch. So. And you know, it's, it's one of those things like with that, because it was so, you know, physically exerting yeah. a lot of energy that I wanted to make sure that the gun was really reliable. Correct. So that was, reliability was a huge thing for me, you know, as far as like not failing whenever I'm in a stage or whatever, or like crawling through something, it's not having any issues. Er, early on during these, uh, the, the the initial open gym sessions and stuff like that, when the ranch uh, first opened, mm -hmm. um, there was virtually no grass in the bay. It was like a desert. It was like a beach, basically. Like, yeah, the Sahara. Like yeah. Sahara Desert. Yeah. So we were learning um, very quickly about the parts that we had in our rifles, mm -hmm. and uh, and how and how fast they would wear out, and you know how fast gas rings were, were wear out because you know or uh, bolts break, not closing dust yeah. covers properly that, back dude, then. That is you know? that is actually uh, people ask, hey, why you guys constantly close your dust? It, it is literally from habit from yeah. us trying to early keep on. dirt and stuff yeah. out of there. Yeah, early on, as much shooting as we were doing, it was yeah. just like uh, uh, in in that Sahara Desert, in that uh, yeah. on that beach, uh, it was just it would it was eating guns alive. Yeah. So. Literally just destroying just guns. Destroying so guns so. We were always like closed dust cover, trying to keep it. Honestly, so we were eating it. guns alive so much we were actually just building out cheap rifles sometimes. Yeah, just, and just like here's a, here's this backup, <laughs> just you know? to see how long it would last. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah it's yeah. kind of cool. And the cool thing also about these older guns is busting out, and it's like the paint you can see is just worn on it. Yeah, so, so. that Cerakote job that you have on there. <laughs> yeah, it's the battle worn Cerakote. <laughs> who, who did that? Uh, uh, how many how many times on Instagram that so, someone commented or like uh, on on YouTube they'll they'll see that uh, yeah. in a short or something. People like have that. bought. Hey, how me. did you get that yeah, battle worn <laughs> that battle worn finish? Yeah. Uh, three years of running it with, uh, with Rust Oleum paint spray. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's yeah. just gonna it's gonna wear off naturally. Yeah. So. Um, paint yeah. your rifles. It looks cool. Plus, it's fun. It's it gives relaxing. A good, gives a good character. Yeah. You know, shows the miles. You know. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, I mean, overall, it was, you know, it's one of my, I guess it's a, a favorite build of mine because it kind of was a big portion of my journey and, a, and I kind of, a lot of memories with that. But also I can kind of go back and relate to like, oh, here's the parts that wore out, here's what didn't. And a good rifle will last you, you know? So um, yeah, I mean, it's overall, that's, that's pretty much my build. Yeah. Yeah, cool. If you guys like these types of videos where we talk about our builds and, um, um, you know, uh, let us know down in the comments. Um, I enjoy this type of video. Actually, mm -hmm. I enjoy talking about my different rifles and my different build setups yeah. and kind of my experiences with them. Um, and it really, it's a it's a tell of our journey as yeah. far as shooters. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of cool. Actually, I would like to, you know, do a little more of these. So if mm -hmm. you guys like them and kind of want to follow along, maybe we'll do like a little series of yeah. these where we talk about some some older builds. Yeah. Um, I'm coming Maybe. to mind off uh, with one, like one of my very first rifles. Uh, that'd be cool to kind of break down and how it was set up and see how that compares to some of your setups nowadays. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, what I have changed and kind of grown from. Yeah. So. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Well, if you guys want to see any behind the scenes type stuff about rifles or, you know, painting and, you know, uh, pictures of guy, all that kind of stuff, go check out our Instagram. Uh, we're also on Twitter. We're trying to, or X, I think it's called X now. Um, but we're Did on there. Is the name of it for real? Yeah, it's X. Huh. Hmm. No more tweets. how much I actually pay attention to social yeah. media. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even uh, know that. MySpace? Is that a style? MySpace is gone, guys? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Friggin'. Dude, Man. Facebook's going to be the new Did MySpace. Did you post something on my page? <laughs> uh, what's your favorite song? Uh, yeah, so we're on, we're on, I almost said MySpace. We're on X <laughs> and Twitter and Rumble. Uh, we're on all the different outlets, so make sure you go check those things out. Also, if you want to save some money on some products, go check out the discount codes below or Come check out the website or come to the shop if you're local and come pick up some stuff that you might need. Another great way to support us is come train with us. We love training with you guys. And maybe you'll get to see old Reliable and touch the old Rusty Bumpkin. So <laughs> I don't know what that means. That sounds real bad on the mic. <laughs> <That does sound. laughs> Anyways. Uh, uh, this episode is going to get banned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm just, it's, it's pumpkin latte season. So it's all fine. So anyways, uh, guys, we'll make sure you go out and train. Make sure you invest in yourself be the asset and not the liability and we'll see you on the next one rusty bumpkin rusty bumpkin what the what hell does that, that even mean